my apologies for the last version of this video, it had a 40 second gap, so here is, is a re-upload of it. Cossacks 3, it's an upcoming RTS, and it is basically a remake of the first one. If you do not know what Cossacks is, it is a real-time strategy game that has many similarities with Age of Empires 2. The main difference being the time uh, when it happens, 17th and 18th century, and the fact that you can field armies of thousands of soldiers instead of a few hundreds. There are a few things that I want to improve over the first one. Number 1. 18th century uniforms. Starting with Gustavus Adolphus of Sweden in the Thirty Years War, armies started using brightly colored uniforms, basically with one color per country, for example, France was white, England red, Russia dark green, Prussia dark blue, and so on and so on. In Cossacks, most factions had the same generic 18th century soldiers, with the exception of if I recall, are Prussia, Saxony, Denmark, and Bavaria. They should make nice historic uniforms for each faction. And the player color, it is important, but it doesn't have to be. Three quarters of the, the pixels of the unit. It should be only the facings of the uniforms. It is a secondary color, such as the sleeves and stuff like that. The main color should be historical color. I am aware that Cossacks 3 will have some modding capabilities, so perhaps the mods will do that at least, but anyway, it would be very, very cool to have that. Number 2 is the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire was a major power in this period. They came to the gates of Vienna in 1683, so quite fearful. In Cossacks 1, they are not, uh, the game does not make them justice. Every faction has its own architecture, except the Ottomans, who share their architecture with Algeria, and since it does not look like Constantinople, I believe it is an Algerian architecture that they copied for the Ottomans. Every nation, except the Ottomans, have an architecture that is taken from the capital of the country. So please, take buildings from Constantinople to make their architecture. They really should be in one nice faction since they are very important in this period. Number 3. Ranged only units. With the exception of 18th century musketeers and grenadiers, ranged units had no melee attacks. That means that your soldiers, I mean if you only have musketeers for example, will be completely useless if uh, one pikeman uh, come um, to attack them since they cannot fight back. It is absurd. In the 17th century, Soldiers basically all had a sidearm, most likely some kind of sword or a dagger for the poorest one, but even if you had nothing but your musket, well, you could still go full caveman, caveman mode and use it as a club. Melee only units should of course remain better in melee, with better attack in armor, I mean, an halberd against a sword, the halberd wins most of the time. But range units shouldn't stupidly stay to be slaughtered. About that, the main, the most problematic unit is the Russian Strollet. To stabilize this musket, and it is historically accurate, nice point for that, he uses a burlish. It is a big ass <laughs> two-handed axe that uh, is known for killing the, the horse and the rider in one blow. I mean, this axe is a monster. And in game, they have no melee attack. <laughs> Why you would expect them to use this axe and get their way through the enemy? Number 4. Pathfinding. I know that 8000 units on such an, an old game, it's impressive and I fully understand why you use shortcuts to make it run on very old computers. So, I don't blame you for not having the same 
quality, if we can say, as Edge of Empires 2, who had perhaps 20 times less units to deal with. But there is a big problem I have. Pathfinding. Sometimes, half of your fleet can lose itself while you give them the simple order to move there or there. And when you use formations, sometimes they are stuck where they are, you have to give them an order again to move very closely to be unlocked. I really want it to be fixed. Number 5. Capturing buildings. One of the easiest ways of destroying the enemy town, if they have no walls, and who builds the walls in Cossacks anyway, is they take forever to build and second to destroy with artillery, is to create a few hundred SRs, very quick cavalry, and send them to rush on the enemy town while the army is not there. They will kill a few soldiers there, and <laughs> After that, they will automatically capture every civilian building, most of the uh, peasants, so you can basically kill their economy very easily like that. I think that the capture of buildings is OP. It is instantaneous and it's very frustrating to deal with. It's very cool to capture them, but you should balance that by putting a timer to take the buildings. I don't know, perhaps, uh, keep some soldiers during one minute around them to capture this building. It would be a nice balance for... it is extremely destructive for now. Number 6. Advanced commands such as hit and run. You are a human, not a machine. You cannot process thousands of units separately and even less give them order repeatedly, such as attack, retreat, attack, retreat, attack, retreat, and so on and so on. You should have the ability to give them some orders that give them some degree of freedom. There is already guard and patrol, I believe, but others such as hit and run would be very welcome. After all, if you are a real general and have irregular troops, you do not have to give them the order every, every five minutes. Now you attack, now you retreat. You let them do what they do. I know. Mounted shooters, such as dragoons or horse archers, especially horse archers, can be a pain in the arse to deal, to deal with. But with gunpowder, the fact is, infantry now has a better firepower. So if you blindly ask to hit and run some a group of musketeers, your um, dragons will not last very long. So, of course you'll have to be careful while using it, it is not OP, it is not uh, nor useless, it is a very shit situational order, but it would be very very welcome. Number 7. Easier management for big armies. When Cossacks came out, controlling armies of, the, of this size was something new, I, can, I we could say. But since then, we've had some games like Total War, in which you control thousands of soldiers very easily. So, you can improve the system to control a very big army. I have not played Cossacks 2, so I cannot say what has been improved on that. But, in any case, you should uh, take inspiration from Total War for, to control a big army. Also, having one button on formations to ask to refill their, their, their ranks would be also extremely useful. To make it simple, you press the button and it asks your nearest barracks to create, I don't know, the 20 musketeers missing and ask them to come to the formation immediately. Uh, not, not immediately, but automatically. Yes. It, they can be killed by enemy cavalry you know, on the road, but it is also the case if you make them manually, and it's much longer for the same result if you make them manually instead of one button to give the order. So. Number 8. Mixed Units Formations. Before the bayonets were invented, so what is in-game 
the 17th century, you had armies that were made of pikemen or alberaders or whatever long weapon that was effective to repel cavalry, and musketeers for long range shooting, of course. So, having formations that mix the, these two kinds of soldiers would be very good in the 17th century. I know, you can already make formations of pikemen, formations of musketeers, and uh, somewhat assemble the two, but having a solid formation that always puts uh, the pikemen in the front or at the other side of the square, that would be a very nice touch. You could use, uh, for example, Spanish tercios very easily that way. So that's everything I can think about. Thank you for watching. Feel free to sub to comment, subscribe, and I believe you know you know the drill. Goodbye, and see you soon.